There's so much happening. There's so much happening right now, and it's it's hard to keep up. Give me give me the uh, William breakdown of what you dig. Um, I'm going to be getting a lot into photogrammetry in the next uh, for the next year or so. You are you're um, working with me yes. on it, so I'm excited. Yes, okay. so that's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to be an ambassador for uh, capturing reality, which is going to, so lots happening there. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. Like it's, it's something I've done a bit of before, mm -hmm. but it always struck me as kind of not super viable just because of you know public count limitations before right so there's so much work involved in photogrammetry between like actually going out on set taking the photos scanning it poly redoing or doing retopo and then just transferring there was so much work involved that sometimes it was just easier to just make it from scratch yeah. right uh but now things are just i mean mega scans is a classic example of a massive success of photogrammetry um Mega scans is probably one of Unreal's biggest selling points right now. Yeah. Like it's getting to the point where I've had people asking, like, "Oh, well, why would you use Unreal instead of like Octane or Redshift or other renderers?" I'm like, "Well, I mean, Mega scans alone, that is worth gold. That just makes Unreal so useful and just getting ideas out there. It just it's just so easy now. Like, I'm, like of course now I'm more of a um, VFX kind of type of approach. I'm working more. I'm just trying to get some nice visuals out." I don't do much games related stuff nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so obviously like performance wise, I think we're still learning on how Nanite is going to work in productions. I think we're a lot, there's still gonna be a lot of figuring out. It's gonna be hard. I mean, all the, I think if, every single time there's new tools, you yeah. got on them, I'm like, oh, we're gonna use all these things like Nanite and Lumen. And I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't mean like you still have the same like memory requirements. It doesn't, yes. You're not getting more memory. So <laughs> no, but Nanite does compress very well. It does. So yeah, it does. So that's the beauty of it. I, I can't remember the exact amounts there, but the, the beauty of Nanite is that when compressed or packaged into a game, it takes up way less space. And does that have LODs built into it, or is it just? Being uh, it kind of does its own LOD thing, right? So it's kind of all dynamic based on camera space and yeah. on the size on screen and stuff. So, like I said, I think there's still a lot of figuring out to do when it comes to Nanite. I don't think it's the magic solution to all our problems, but it definitely makes some things easier. Yeah, oh, same with Lumen. You're like, oh my god. Yeah. For sure. And that's, that's, that's insane. Like I think Lumen is very exciting. Uh, both the fact that both Lumen and Nanite come out together is just. That's really exciting for the future. So I can't, that's one of the main that combined with photogrammetry, um, plus not just that, but stuff like stuff like Houdini Sims and thing getting all insane simulations into into uh, UE five is like. Yeah. Have you very, touched, very I've exciting. never touched Houdini. I, I want to, but a I little it's, bit. It's super heavy node based, right? It is totally node based, and that's kind of the beauty of it because it's a non destructive approach. So like the way I, I, I like to see it is Maya, 3ds Max, Blender, like those traditional modeling packages. Those are a Swiss army knife. Uh, you can do a little bit of everything in those things. But Houdini is like the actual blacksmith who makes the Swiss army knife. You can do anything in Houdini, anything whatsoever. You can build your own system, your own tools. You can do these insanely complex things. Uh, that's where someone like me will not thrive because I'm an artist. I don't have that. Like, I feel like people who are more like tech artists or tech side. Like, Just like yeah. this guy. So, <laughs> Another good one is like Substance Painter. I love Substance Painter. Super but awesome. someone's like, use Substance Designer. I'm like, nah, I can't. It, it's definitely a learning curve. Like I, I learned how to use like node-based systems uh, when I was working in film, primarily because I was doing a lot of what we call look dev. So look development. So doing like shaders and materials and that kind of thing. Um, and got very, what, not very, fairly proficient in like n b building node graphs uh, to get the desired look. And having a totally procedural approach to things is extremely powerful because you know yeah. in my in my if you want to make like um i don't know a, a, a cobblestone road you can do it it's not too bad but like in houdini you can just build entire layouts of streets with that cobblestone road right and just change the amount of roads and just the amount of floors in the building just very quickly and easily procedurally which is very very powerful it's inspiring and depressing at the same time it's just like ah, oh, i don't want to oh no <laughs> Yeah. But for I've seen people work in Houdini and like actual wizards with the stuff, and it's just <laughs> it makes me feel so like insecure. insecure. <laughs> no, I I, I, I I think that's the thing too. Like you know, I've been doing this for twenty years now, and you you gotta recognize your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. I think that's more why I switched more to the uh, production right. production side. It's like I, I had my run. I love. I still love learning the, the cool, the top, the content, yeah. the tools, and all stuff. But I'm gonna have to do that at my own pace. 
where I feel like I'm like, all right, well, I'll just handle the other three things. Like I know what's going on, but I'm gonna try to help with the organization personalities and pushing through and all the stuff.